What if I tell you that you can hack into any computer just by running a single line of code on the targeted system? Astonishing, right? But it is possible. In this video, we will learn about reverse shells. A reverse shell is a method used by hackers to gain control of a target device. Instead of directly connecting to the victim's computer, the hacker tricks the victim's system into initiating a connection back to them. Once connected, the hacker can execute commands on the victim's machine as if they were sitting right in front of it. This is useful because most firewalls block incoming connections but a reverse shell works by making the victim send an outgoing connection, which is usually allowed. Before moving forward, I'd love to tell you about our monthly memberships, which you can buy to get access to private sections of our Discord server, free access to all premium PDF files, and many other perks. Check out the first link in the description if you want to be a member of our community. More on this later. Coming back to the topic, reverse shells are very important when playing capture the flag competitions and also in real-world scenarios. Reverse shells are very easy to set up. We have to set up a listener on our own system where the targeted machine can connect back. We mostly do this using the Netcat tool in Linux. On the other hand, we run our reverse shell code on the targeted computer. There are multiple ways and websites to create a reverse shell. You can find Pentest Monkey and many others online, but for the sake of this video, we are going to use RevShells.com. This tool is made by renowned hacker Ryan Montgomery and is mostly used for creating reverse shells while playing CTFS. Okay, now let's understand this practically. Visit the website by clicking the link in the description or you can just search for it. It's not rocket science. First, you have to specify the IP address of your own computer. Obviously, because we want our reverse shell to connect back to our own system, you can get your IP address by typing if config in your Linux terminal, but make sure you are putting the IP address of the right interface in the reverse shell. Your system can have multiple IP addresses. For each interface connected, it may have a different IP. Let's say you're playing a TriHackMe room and to connect to most TriHackMe machines, we are provided with an open VPN network. In that case, you have to copy the IP address of that VPN interface, not the IP address of the interface connected to your local network. Well, if you are finding the video interesting, subscribe to the channel and don't forget to like this video. Also, join our Discord server and meet like-minded people. After entering your IP address, the next step is to specify the port. If you don't know about ports, think of them like doors that allow access to specific services. You can specify any free port here, let's say 4444. By doing this, we are telling our reverse shell to to connect back to this port on our system. Now scroll a bit and you will see a list of different languages in which you can generate your reverse shell. You get bash, Python, PHP, C, and many others. But in this video, we are only going to cover a few. Before that, we need to set up a listener on our own machine where the reverse shell will connect back. If you don't set up a listener and try to execute the reverse shell on your targeted system, it won't work and will throw an error, and we don't want that. To set up a listener in Linux, you can use netcat. Just type nc with the following flags and then specify the port we used in our reverse shell, in this case, 4444. Once you press enter, it will start listening on this port for incoming connections. Getting back to the reverse shell, let's copy this netcat reverse shell and try to execute it on our machine. You can see that it's just a single line of code, but make sure you don't try this on anyone else's computer without permission. It is completely illegal and can put you behind bars. Okay, so now let's execute this on my own Kali Linux, and as you can see, we have successfully got a shell. Now we can run any command on the targeted system and take complete control over it. This was just an example using Netcat, but you can also use Python, Bash, PHP, and C shells depending on different scenarios. Let's say you find a vulnerability in a file upload system of a web server. In that case, you can upload a PHP reverse shell and trigger it with a web request to get a reverse shell. Once you have access, you can perform privilege escalation to get root access and completely own the system. In fact, there is a tool in Kali Linux called Web Shells, which gives you access to different reverse shell and backdoor codes for various web server of a back-end languages like PHP, ASP, and many others. You can also create a PowerShell backdoor for Windows systems to get a Windows reverse shell. RevShells.com provides base64 encoded PowerShell commands that you can run on the targeted system to gain access. You can bind a reverse shell with other vulnerabilities to gain access to a system such as local file inclusion or SQL injection. Reverse shells are very important to learn and you should definitely give them a shot. Now let's get back to our memberships. You can join our monthly membership by clicking the first link in the description. We have categorized them into three plans. The basic plan gives you free access to all PDF files listed in our shop. The elites plan gets you a custom supporter role in the Discord server with extra perks. Finally, the hacker plan includes many extra features, a custom hacker role in the Discord server, and much more. Click the first link in the description to learn more and believe me, it's worth more than you think.